Hi there, it's April the 3rd and today continuing our journey through the Torah we're in Deuteronomy chapter 23 to 25. Deuteronomy 23 to 25 contains miscellaneous directions, miscellaneous laws. The first thing that uh, Deuteronomy 23 does is it excludes certain people from the congregation, certain men from the congregation who have things wrong with them because they are to be whole and complete. But also certain nationalities are to be excluded because of their animosity towards Israel. There's a reminder of Balaam's blessing over the people of Israel when Balak wanted him to curse them. A reminder that they are a blessed people. But interestingly, they're not to hate the Egyptians because they dwelt in the land of the Egyptians. The Egyptians actually hosted them, so they are not to include the Egyptians uh, in their hatred, in their rejection. There then follows laws of hygiene and sanitation, practical things, how to keep the tent, how to keep the camp clean, how to keep themselves clean. There's also an element of protection for escaped slaves. They're not to return an escaped slave to their master. There's also no usury, no interest to be charged to fellow Israelites. They're to lend without interest. Also, vows are to be kept. If someone makes a vow, it's important that vow is kept. But of course, they don't have to make a vow. And then also, they're allowed to eat grapes from someone else's vine, but not to collect them. Uh, and also to eat uh, ears of corn from someone else's uh, sheaves, but they're not allowed to put the scythe in. And reminds us perhaps of Jesus' disciples walking through the fields and, uh, and taking ears of corn to get the food out of them on the Sabbath day. That's, that's okay according to this law in Deuteronomy. Then in Deuteronomy 24 there's the law of divorce, which Jesus said was there because of their hardness of heart. But there is space in the law of Moses to divorce uh, a, a wife who is not pleasing to a husband. Then there's the opposite, and that is that the newly married are free for a year. The man is free particularly from uh, military service so that they can enjoy their honeymoon period together of a whole year. There are warnings against leprosy, there are um, prosecutions for theft, but there's also a warning that children are not to die for the crimes of their fathers. Only the person who has committed the crime is actually to carry the penalty. So there's no um, right of wiping out whole families because of crimes. Perversion of judgment is forbidden. If there's any bribery and so on, they're not allowed to pervert judgment. And also there's instructions again to leave gleanings for the poor, this time the gleanings of the vine and the gleanings uh, of the olive tree, so that they don't completely go back and beat all the boughs, beat everything off the boughs, but they leave something there for the poor. In Deuteronomy 25, we see that where there is corporal punishment imposed, where there's lashes imposed, the maximum that mercifully can be given is 40 lashes. We know, of course, that the Apostle Paul refers to that, that he suffered the 40 lashes, and that there were not allowed to be more by law of 40. Also, it says here, don't muzzle the ox when it's treading the grain. That's another scripture that is referred to in the New Testament when it's talking about those who earn their living from the gospel. And then it's instructions on what's called leveret marriage. Levir meaning brother-in-law. The This is when a, a, a man dies and his brother is called to raise up family for him with the dead man's widow. However, he doesn't have to do this. Um, he's not forced to do it, but if he does, there's a certain shame attached to it, and he has to take off his sandal and give his sandal over to say that he's not going to take up the lever at right. We see this reflected again in the book of Ruth later on in the scriptures, where um, Boaz goes and encounters one who is closer to Ruth, who should redeem her, who should uh, raise up children, for her hus dead husband, but instead he gives his sandal over to Boaz, and Boaz inherits the right to marry Ruth. There's a final um, encouragement not to have unjust weights. Weights and measures actually are very important to God. They're a sign of his justice. And a last uh, warning against the Amalekites, and the fact that the uh, Amalekites are to be uh, are, are to be wiped out because of the way that they treated the Israelites. 
So there's a number of, uh, of instructions and regulations laid down for Israel. Um, the main thing being that God wants justice for the poor, particularly that picture of the gleaning that goes on. And also there are instructions about not taking a poor man's garment from him in loan. God has a heart for the poor. God does not want to see the poor oppressed. Have a very good April the 3rd.